is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not try and adjust the picture. We are controlling the transmission. If you wish to make it louder, we will do so for you. We will control the horizontal, and we will control the vertical. For the next 20 minutes, sit back, relax. You are about to go on an amazing adventure. L is for lovers who love one another. A is for ass, of which I like to eat. U is for you're the only one for me. G is for the only gamer I see. H is for happy, I always feel it. When you put it together, what do you get? Welcome back, giggle boxes and laughy pants alike. I found a brand new channel. Well, it's not new. It's old Thai TV time. <laughs> Ever since I reacted to the Irish sex education from the 80s, let's get a little clip of that. Slippery. Ew. Oh my god. This is so fucking weird. No trouble. <laughs> no trouble so at all he at all. his penis into her vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. I have been perusing the internet, <laughs> sniffing out the bullshit, looking for all the good stuff that we can watch together. And I found this channel called Old TV Time. I think that they're an old American broadcasting, but they have a lot of the same stuff. Dating do's and don'ts, the story of menstruation, young men's fancy, and as boys grow. But I wouldn't know anything about that, because I got to this height, I grew up to here, and then I was like, ha, ah, no more for you, stop. But I am very curious about the do's and don'ts of dating from 1949. Did people even have faces back then? Yes, mom, I've got it. What's that? What is that? Is that a condom? The Central High High Teen Carnival? Wow! Last time I went to a carnival, a clown bit a child and tried to kill everyone in the village. It's really weird. <laughs> One couple. That means a date. Uh-oh. Just me and the girl. Well, that's alright. How do you choose a date? That was a lot of internal thinking. That was a lot of struggle going on inside that young man's mind. All right, but if you go to the carnival with a girl in 1949, no touching before marriage. Don't even look at her. Well, one thing you can consider is looks. Oh no. Woody thought of Janice and how good looking she was. Oh, we're he starting really off. have to rate to date somebody like her. <laughs> we're starting off real shallow. <laughs> Well, you gotta go into the shallow parts before you can hit the deep parts. Except, well, it's too bad Janice always acts so superior and bored. She'd <laughs> make a fellow feel awkward and inferior. Okay, that was it. <laughs> Janet is superior, so we can't go with her. I don't want to be a beta. Nothing wrong with a strong, powerful, confident woman. All right? They got their shit together and they know what they want. Well, perhaps someone who doesn't feel superior. There's Betty. And yet, it just doesn't seem as if she'd be much fun. <laughs> Betty's a mess. She hates herself and she's no self-esteem. What about Anne? She knows how to have a good time. Oh my god, that's how they introduce poor Anne. Anne's great. She looks alright, but she has a mouth on her like a... <laughs> like a raccoon. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, that's what a boy likes. He wants to know he's appreciated. Anne would be fun on a date. That's true. Oh, they're lovely together. Well, Woody, hi. Hi, Ed. What you doing? Just thinking. Don't work too hard. He worked really hard, Ed. He's been thinking for the last 10 minutes and his ears are steaming. Hey, is that Tony's Pizzeria? I want a bag of cocaine. Oh, sorry, gotta go. My mom's here. Is it all right with you if I have a date Saturday night? <gasps> a date? Well, you're rather young. Oh, Mom, give him a break. I think he can swing it. We all have to start sometime. Well, if you don't overdo on dating, Ed knows what I mean. Weekends <laughs> only and not too late. <laughs> if you don't overdose on dating, I'll let you do it, all right? Ed over here, his whole life went downhill once he started dating. He couldn't stop doing it. I think I can get by a little earlier than usual. Wow. Ed's so dreamy. Boy, you sure make it sound easy. 
<laughs> All he did was like, I'm sure I can get off for tonight. Is 7.30 good? Boy! You sure make it seem easy! I'm with you though. Uh, phone calls terrify me. I don't want to do any of them now. I don't want to do any of them in the future. Um, this is before texting, you poor bastards. Oh? Is he gonna do it? Is he gonna do it? My boy! Go for it! No, 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 pick it up. Here you go. Hello, Mrs. Davis. This is Woody. Uh, I mean, Alan Woodruff. But may I speak to Anne? No, you can't. She's having her dinner. Fuck off. How do you ask for a date? Oh, I want to know. Well, uh, how about a date? Uh, well, I mean... Well, really? No, thanks, Woody. Oh! Oh! My boy got rejected! No! How? Oh, that's heartbreaking! It's okay, Woody, you don't need her! Anne's a cold-hearted wench! You're better off without her! Well, suppose he did it this way. Hi, uh, Anne. What you doing Saturday night? Well, I... I, I guess I'm busy. Oh, yeah? Any chance of giving him the brush off for me? Well, of all the nerve! Damn, Woody. Striking a miss on that one. Anne? This is Woody. Well, I have a ticket for the high team carnival Saturday, and well, would you like to go? Why, yes, Woody. I'll have to talk to my folks about it, but I think I can go. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. <laughs> Thanks for giving me your ticket. I'll bring my brother Jeff. A date with Woody. Saturday. They're so cute. Young love blossoming in the wind. A date, huh? What'll you do? Is it just me or is Anne right now wearing exactly what Woody was wearing in the previous scene? They're wearing the exact same outfit. <laughs> There's a fun on my coat. Goodness, you know we have fun. Oh my god, the dad and the son look the exact same. <laughs> They're wearing the exact same outfit. Ah, 1949, where there was only 10 outfits in the town and you all had to share. Why, the night of my first date. Woody, <laughs> stop day stroking your Woody while your parents are telling you a loving story. Flowers. Anne won't expect flowers, will she? Oh. Uh, oh, I hardly think so. I'm taking these to Mary because it's a special occasion. I love that everyone back then just sounded like, I'm taking her to the ball on a special occasion. So far, all I'm learning about the do's and don'ts of dating in 1949 is show up on time and don't look like shit. Here we go. The big day. What in the loving fuck? Oh, there they are! I didn't even recognize them! They're so dolled up! Are they gonna get their fortune told together? I'm sorry, it looks like you're going to die in the next five minutes. <laughs> Whoopsie doopsies. <laughs> oh, yes! The 1940s teen carnival, where everything moved at 100 miles an hour, including life itself. Teenagehood? I hardly know her. Oh, come on, Anne. Don't be such a lady. It's a hot dog. There's no clean way of eating them. You either get shit in your face or shit in your clothes. Either way, you're getting shitted on. Why is there so many ghost balloons around? <laughs> It'd be so annoying walking along. Just... God, fucking balloons everywhere. Oh, no. And now, good night. The end of a perfect evening. <sighs> Are they gonna kiss? Do you think they're gonna kiss? <sighs> How do you say good night? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, Woody! My dude just went for it! Oh, man! He was like a shark getting ready to bite down on some tasty seafood. God damn it, Woody, you blew it again. Or it could go this way. Oh my god, they're gonna do it. Well, so long. Uh <laughs> <laughs> just like that. You see, that's the best contraception. You can't get pregnant if you don't get kissed. Because, as Yoda says, kissing leads to fucking... <laughs> well, it's getting late. Yes, it is. I'd ask you in for a bite to eat if it were so late. Um, let's plan to get home in time for a sandwich or something next time. Say, that sounds good. I'll call you next week. Will you? Well, thanks so much. I have loads of fun. That's cool. So did I. Good night, Woody. It's gonna happen. Bye, then. It's... Oh.
I, I guess I guess you don't kiss in 1949. That's it. That's it? That night, Woody went missing on his walk home. He was never found again, except his ring finger was sent in the mail to his parents. I didn't learn a whole lot about the do's and don'ts of dating. I'd just be on time, look nice, and don't kiss her at the door, apparently. Man, 1949 is boring. Not like 2020, where we've got, like, self-isolation and a pandemic. What up? Woo! Shout out! Sorry. I, um, don't know what came over me. Loof! Now you've all learned what to do and not do on a date in 1949. Let's learn how to be well-groomed in 1949. And I mean just your hygiene. That's a different type of grooming that you're thinking of, and it's not allowed. How to be well-groomed by the Coronet Instructional Films Organization. Say, do you look smooth? <laughs> I don't know, do I look smooth? Yes, indeed. Both Don and Sue look like the kind of people you'd like to know, don't they? <laughs> They look like the kind of people you want to know. Not like those other dirty bastards out there. Both Don and Sue look like the kind of people you'd like to know, don't they? Yes, and that's no accident. Uh, who's the lady? I can, get, I can get away with one narrator, but now why do I have two? Health, posture, cleanliness, and neatness. What? What do health and posture have to do with grooming? Grooming. The practice of brushing and cleaning the coat of a horse, dog, or other animal. The action by a pedophile- No, no, no! It's great to be neat. Hey, sis, haven't you finished with that iron yet? You can have it just a minute. Haven't you got anything else to do? <laughs> no! It's 1949! All I have to do is polish my shoes and iron my shirt and then go to bed. Oh my god. I remember when I used to go to school, maybe, I would iron my shirt. But like, the collar of it, because it looked stupid, because I tr threw it in a ball in the corner after school. Am I just a person who never irons their clothes? Looks fine, doesn't it? I don't have time! I can't be arsed! If other people are looking at my clothes going, hmm... That's quite a few wrinkles. It's not really a person I want to talk to. Keep your clothes looking neat and clean. Have you gotten it yet? Everything is neat and clean. If it's not neat and clean, then you're doing it wrong and you're going straight to hell. Sue avoids red nail polish, since it would call attention to her stubby hands. <laughs> Since it would call attention to her stubby hands. <laughs> she avoids red lipstick because it would draw attention to her stupid little gremlin face. And now for at least eight hours of sleep. Good. What's that like? How does that feel? Eight hours of sleep? My body requires like ten. And then I wake up and I'm like, more please. Good health is a rule. For health is one of the foundations of your appearance. All right, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that. Good health, good hair. Good health, good stubby little hands. Wake up! Wake up! It's 1949 and the bombs are dropping! Leave some hot water for me. And hurry! I'm very dirty. <laughs> what do you think? No. How will Don look in this combination? Hideous. That, that's too much going on. If you wear a shirt like that, it's going to draw attention to your stubby little arms. How about this combination? Now, there you go. Bland, boring, blends right in, and no one will give a shit. Don is putting one more finishing touch to his appearance. He's going to shave his arse. <laughs> now for a cleansing morning shower. Meanwhile, Sue gives thought to the day. I want to see how to clean myself in the shower. What if I go in there and do it wrong? You know, it's just all this effort going into my hair, my nails, my stubby little face, and my outfit. What if I don't clean behind my ears or under my nuts? I'm never going to know now. I'm going to be dirty all day. Fellows like to see girls dress up, but in general, only for a special occasion. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, choose clothes that are suitable. Suitable to your needs and situation. But remember that any clothes look better with good posture. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yes, God forbid that you go out dressed just for yourself. That you just want to look nice for yourself, you know. Who cares what the other people think? You can't go out showing elbows! Everyone who thinks you're a whore! Bella, thank God it's not 1949 anymore. After breakfast, Sue goes back to her room for some finishing touches. God, what else can you do? God, you're already dressed up to the nines! Let it go! Come on, we'll be late. <laughs> oh boy, at the mirror again. The whole fucking video is about how long 
You spend getting ready and looking neat. And then he's judging her for being at the mirror? Well, the mirror could help you check your clothes, too. And improve your posture. Yeah, Don. You look like a gorilla. Oh, Chazika. Thanks. And I could straighten up, couldn't I? How does Sue look? Well, she looks like sunshine on a cloudy day. How does Don look? He looks like a basket of apples. Uh-oh. This is where we came in. And this <laughs> is where Don and Sue go out for a pleasant evening. Oh, wholesome. Their good grooming habits help them in friendships and in business. For your success depends a great deal on how you look. Oh my god, does it? In 1949, was it really that important how you looked? Your success is based on how you look? That is a god-awful message to end that video on. Don't forget, if you go out with dirty nails and a dirty face, no one would want to be around you. I wonder what would happen if you showed the people of this time and they watched this video. First of all, I am astonished that these videos exist. That there's a ten and a half minute video on how to be well groomed. And all it is is like, yeah, just shower and make sure you look okay. But imagine going back and showing the people after they watch this video. Just giving them TikTok. And being like, here. What do you think? <laughs> they would lose their goddamn minds. I don't know about you guys, but I have a strong desire to iron my shirts and polish my shoes now. What am I gonna do? Is my hemline okay? This one is all about, are you popular? It's from 1947. We're going two years further back. This is crazy. I didn't even know videos existed then. Coronet presents, are you popular? I know, it's 1947. Are you well groomed? Because apparently that depends a great deal. Let's watch and see what makes people like one person and not another. I'm so excited. We're going to learn a lot here today, guys. We're going to become even more popular here on the Jacksepticeye Variety Channel. I can't wait. We only get 7 billion subs after this. Her name's Carolyn Ames. She's a swell kid. Why? Do you know her? Not very well. I wish I did. Why? You know her? Not very well. But I wish I did, Jerry. You. Jenny thinks that she has the key to popularity, parking in cars with the boys at night. When Jerry brags about taking Jenny out, he learns that she dates all the boys, and he feels less important. That's not how you get popular, Jenny. Sleeping around's going to get you nowhere. It's probably because you've red nail polish and everyone's looking at your stubby little hands. No, Thanks, girls Jerry. who park in cars are not really popular. Not even with the boys they park with. Not when they meet at school or elsewhere. What? Nothing like being Miss Popularity. Yeah. He just told me that she's not popular. Now you're calling her Miss Popularity. Was that sarcasm? When was sarcasm invented? It is first recorded in English in 1579. Oh, man. What was sarcasm in 1579? <laughs> oh, sure. I don't need my arm after it was chopped off in battle. I'll be just fine. Oh, hi, oh, Carolyn. Oh, Good to see you. Carolyn Ames. Betty's leading our class play. Oh, yes. I looked in on it so yesterday. We're all in on it in one way or another. I'm on the costume committee. And Jerry and I are stagehands. Hmm, two among a dozen or so. How about you, Wally? Where do you fit in all this? Oh, I'm a one-man team that does a job with no glory attached. <laughs> it's called masturbating. <laughs> You sound like you need a helper. Could I lend a hand? Oh my god! <laughs> Why does that work so well? I don't know anything about props, but I could learn. <laughs> oh, I need some help too, Carolyn. Hey, lay off. I saw her first. They just turned this whole conversation around. Wait, Carolyn just sat down with her lunch. She doesn't even get time to eat it. See, we ought to get together and talk over those props a little. Could you meet me backstage at 3.15? Oh, that'd be fine, Wally. See you at rehearsal. Hey, maybe I should leave those guys alone. It's kind of a little kinky for my liking. Oh, are you asking her out on a date? Hello? I uh, I know what to do. Um, I, I didn't learn anything. I was wondering if you'd like to go to the Strand to see a movie Saturday night. And then go over to Teen Town, maybe. Well, yes, I... Or if you'd rather go with the gang on a skating party and weenie roast, we'd have to leave earlier for that, though. 
we learned that you don't just get so direct with it. He was just straight like, hey, what's up, girl? Yeah, what'd that mouth do? A uh, weenie roast? Wally has used a lot of common sense in putting the invitation this way. It shows he has thought about what Carolyn might like. And he has implied his price range. I love the idea of them not saying anything. For that entire section. They're just sitting there like... Hello? Bye. Well, that phone call didn't go on for hours. Don't you ever go out with anyone else at all? Nope. Well, don't you ever want to? On nights like this, I do. I never Whoa. know what he's planned. He just says, will you decide, Ellie? The cinematography! I just think you'd run out of ideas. Oh, I'm getting to that point. That's dope! <laughs> Show you in the reflection, that's fucking awesome! Also, I still have no idea why Carolyn is popular and I'm not. I'm not learning a damn thing. No one's calling up my phone asking for dates. Oh, Carolyn, I made some brownies today. Maybe you and Wally would like them when you get back. There's some milk in the icebox too, isn't there? How does that sound? Gee, that sounds good. We'll take you up on it, Mrs. Ames. Thanks. Carolyn and her mother have found one way a girl can repay a boy for entertaining her. A bite to eat at her house will save him money. Perhaps they'll bring another couple home with them. That would be fun. <laughs> Folks, <no> <laughs> <laughs> That would be fun, wouldn't it? Don't I just sound like I'm having the best time? I know nothing about being popular yet! This is like the dating one all over again. Have fun, you two. <laughs> I'll take good care of her, Mrs. Ames. Bye. He has <laughs> the earmuffs on. I'll take good care of her, Mrs. Ames! Don't worry! We're gonna go now! Now we can finally bust out the weed and start the real party. Home, parents, and personality all help boys and girls to be popular. I didn't learn anything from that. Wally accidentally threw a snowball that had a giant rock inside of it and cracked open her head. He was wanted by the police several days later but could never be found. Alright, well, I don't know how to be popular. That didn't teach me a damn thing. It was just like, hey, maybe be a normal person. <gasps> but with your help, maybe I could be popular. If you smash like in this video, or I'll smash your head in. Also, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell, because that is what good etiquette demands. I was hoping that I could teach you some stuff here today. I was hoping that I'd learn something myself here today, but all I really learned what to do is... <laughs> and at the end of the day, isn't that the most important lesson? Good night, everybody. That's it?